Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, today, uh, today I'll be covering static timing analysis out of my three uh, lecture schedules. That is static timing analysis, signal integrity, and backend design. So let's get into the business directly. Uh, this there will be a quick recap of the ASIC flow methodology. Uh, we start doing the RTL design in say in Verilog or VSDL whatever. Then what we do is first RTL simulation that you typically use the cadence LDV it's going out this okay. So then you do the RTL simulation, RTL simulation means what you try to verify at that point is the functionality of your design okay. If it meets, if it does not meet, meet the functionality you have to go back to RTL design once again you have to redesign it else you just come to the synthesis which typically you use synopsis design compiler or some other vendors tool and after synthesis what you get is the netlist right and during synthesis I have shown you in the lab itself that you can see the timing report. Timing report means all the paths is it meeting the timing I will talk about the timing what I mean by timing today. So if it meets timing then only you have to proceed to the next step if not either you have to do some tweaking in your synthesis script or you have to go back to RTL design that depends I mean depends on the problem you have in your hand. So if it meets the timing so the generated netlist may be wrong what you have intended writing the RTL and what you have got after synthesis it may be completely different probably in your very long course they have your instructor have talked about those things right. So say you have you wanted to create a, a marks whereas it created a, a latch or other things. So, so there is no point of doing the once again the complete functional verification uh, on that net list once again without delay right there is no point of doing that. So what people try to do is formal verification, formal verification there was a course I think already over. So that basically uh, starts from a cone of the logic and builds up the cone and gets the formula of that particular node okay. So it is basically formula based and it is just a quick verification that it is basically equivalence checking between your RTL one hand and the other hand you have the net list. So between these two do a quick equivalence check. If it is passing then only you can go for the next step if it is not probably you have to go to the RTL design once again something is wrong in your RTL design itself okay. Yeah, I have shown it here see if it so when you will be actually uh, this I think this will be uploaded to your net so it will be helpful to you. If it if it pass you go to the next step if it is not either you have to go to the formal verification itself means something wrong in your formal verification script itself or you go back to RTL or synthesis somewhere you have done a mistake. So that is the intelligent judge you have to do at that point of time ok. So once that netlist passes the equivalence check and it meets the timing as well as the DRC constraint, DRC constraint means design rule constraint in the synthesis there will be typically three DRC constraint. If the synthesis does not meet the DRC constraint you cannot proceed. DRC constraint is max transistor, uh, max transition time, max cap, max fan out ok. Transition time means the slew, Let's take a rough edge. See if a signal moves like this these are all transition time right either it is going up, pull up or pull down. So there will be a max limit which will be defined by your library itself, the vendor's library itself and there will be max cap to a particular node that has to be met cap ok and then there is a max fan out one particular net can go to maximum say uh, 14, 14 points ok. So those things are called logical DRC that has to be met first that is the highest priority. Up, so DRC has more priority than timing ok if DRC meets then only you see the timing 
if timing also meets then you can look for area or power whatever it does not matter much ok. So, if only if those two meets you go for formal verification and then the back end flow ok. ok. In back end flow with the net list what you start is doing is the floor plan ok. Floor plan means there are some cells all the standard cells and macro cells you have generated by by means of your net list ok. Is it understandable so far? I am not getting from this place ok. So, that has to be planned properly otherwise what happens now? You may messed up in wasting your space inside the chip which is very costly. So, that is not at all allowable you have to optimize it at the best as you can ok. So, floor plan does matter. Uh, generally we do that floor plan by Jupyter XT there is a tool from synopsis ok. So, once floor plan is done and you are satisfied with the floor plan. Uh, so, typically in uh, how people go through these steps no people just do a first rough floor plan rough floor plan followed by placement routing etc rough then they go back to here once again they do the floor plan see the results once again. So, it is a loop ok and this loop continues for say one month or two months depending on your expertise or experience ok and already the chip might have already the footprint also this floor plan might be already existing. So, if you are in a business unit already in a company uh, so, they are selling the same chip to already by some years few years last few years right. So, the the footprint might be already existing. So, there is no point going going for the uh, top level floor plan say there will be three blocks main main core uh, super blocks big big blocks. So, there is no point of going for those big blocks floor planning, but inside those big blocks the standard cells you have to place once again because you have done the synthesis you have changed the design right. So, once floor plan is praised you are going for placement. Placement basically is basically this placement and followed by routing this placement and routing typically we do it by a tool called astro this from synopsis I actually I am familiar with synopsis. So, this is done by Astro, uh, this is a very powerful tool. This placement actually is done of macro, macro means it is already existing some super block say ARM processor in your say embedded chip you might be using a ARM processor. So, ARM processor is a is supplied by the ARM company name is ARM ok, it is a completely micro microprocessor. So, that you take and so there is no point going inside of that and placing the macro cell I mean standard cells inside that there is no point it is already placed. So, that you take as well as your standard cells standard cells means your library there is AND gates NAND gates all those stuff ok those are standard cells that you have to place, but macro cell you can just do a handcrafting placement right. So, macro cells you place by handcrafting and those standard cells you can automatically by I mean automated algorithm the simulated algorithm uh, then uh, handling then Cunningham lean all those stuff is there no. So, those algorithms will be working in background ok. What you it uh, what you as a designer need to know is how to get the best out of it it is like those are your players ok you are captain and you have to get you have to get the best out of them ok. So, during placement what you always do is you can always try to see is it routable. If you see that is if it is routable see you, you may have uh, 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 in your childhood you have uh, some uh, game we used to play remember uh, that there is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 you start from here go to 3 then come back to 4 then go to 9 right and you should not cross anything. So, the, it is the same thing routing problem is the same thing ok and once you see that it is routable you are getting within your footprint of the chip and with certain other constraints. What are those constraints if you know the back end unfortunately we cannot teach you back end uh, that much deep ok. So, for example, there might be a power step power step means it is a it is a metal line going on ok which is actually carrying the power line VDD line ok. So, say you might want your routing uh, layers uh, routing layers may not be under this ok. So, you have to route through some other point some other place all those things you may have to have a you may have a uh, optimization constraint saying that you cannot place your cell under this also. So, a lot of constraints will be there depending on your application ok. Uh, so, if it is routable it is not congested 
then uh, once again what you uh, do is uh, you go for the I mean once the placement is over routing is over what you do is basically physical verification during physical verification in, inside say you are using 180 nanometer technology of national semiconductor say so you will be using the national semiconductor fab so they will have certain kind of rules say one rule just for example say two metal lines cannot run across within this I mean it has to follow a, a minimum distance of say 10 micrometer or something okay so be, be, I mean when you are working with the tool it may happen this those two metal lines may be routed say by 9 micrometer which is wrong so you have to do the physical verification that's what it means by physical verification there is another tool called, uh, it's done by uh, this physical verification it's called Hercules it's one second from synopsis okay so once physical verification is done what you go for is a tape out but before tape out also you have to make sure so many other steps okay one thing is that after physical verification or everything is over routing is over you once again you can generate the final netlist okay that netlist has to be one second equivalent with your this final netlist after placement has to be one second equivalent to your synthesized netlist because you cannot change the functionality equivalence checking does not mean that everything is same no that is wrong that cannot be that cannot be true what it makes sure is the functionality is okay given this node the equations are okay so as long as that as equations are okay that means it's meeting the functionality right so that's one second you have to check because this tool might do some goof up okay this formal verification here one second you have to do actually you have to run these things n number of times for a one particular chip tape out okay this and then other thing you have to do is once this placement routing is over you extract the parasitics from the chip okay parasitics means those rc values coming see you know the you know that exactly uh, actually after this point say this is your chip earlier during synthesis what it does is the logical synthesis that is why people uh, the headline was logic synthesis right it is a logical synthesis whereas these are called physical synthesis means you place your this block here you place your this block here okay and generally in the chip I mean generally yeah, always okay those chips will have multiple metal layers I say one layer second layer third layer fourth layer fifth layer sixth layer so sixth layer is there why those many layers are there metal layers are there just to make it easier routability that is the major problem okay and typically those metal layers uh, run across say this first layer runs across horizontally say okay second layer will run across vertically horizontally vertically is a relative constant I mean concept okay then the third layer once again go for horizontal and then how do you route say from here to here okay it goes up it goes one second up by via come down one second go up like that it connects to this point so say this somehow it connects okay so you know the exact resistance value of these fellows right you know the exact cap values of these fellows so those things you have to extract by another tool which is called rcxt this is from one second super, uh, synopsis okay rc extract rc extract eh? this block may uh, uh, lay in different layer of no okay the ground is here see you have to lay your uh, you have to place your modules these modules or gates or cells in this layer only in this floor okay only for routing you have to have used those layers okay not for the placement clear so so once you get the exact coordinates of these two you can estimate what not estimate you can measure what is this value rc values and cap values so that information you have to take okay and give it to your sta engine sta engine is basically is a sign of engine it actually do the whole timing and timing analysis inside your chip okay so here you can see this information which is called basically spf okay or sdf sdf means standard delay format and spf is synopsis parasitics extraction format okay these two these two files actually have the information what is the rc values and delays and all 
okay that you have to give to the STA engine and that STA engine will verify that all the paths are meeting all the constraints, timing constraints, glitch analysis, crosstalk analysis, all those hubby stuff. Once it meets, this done by PT and PTSI, both tool. Okay, PT is basically for STA, state time analysis, and PTSI is for signal integrity issues like crosstalk issues and all. Crosstalk, crosstalk delay, crosstalk noise, glitch analysis, all those stuff. Okay. So if generally it won't pass, there will be so many violations inside your chip. Okay. So it, it has to suggest what should be the solution. This guy will just suggest, it can't place it. It will give the suggestion to the, once again, to the Astro tool, okay? That Astro tool will use that suggestion and once again do the ECO placement. ECO placement means incremental placement, you can say, okay? ECO, comes, ECO terms we use for two purposes. One is, this version, your chip is working with this. Next version, I'm not going to change the whole chip functionality. I am going to do a delta change, okay? That is called engineering change order, okay? That issue may come in the RTL level also, it may come in the synthesis level also, it may come here itself, in the physical design also. So more it goes towards the tape out, more you get benefited, okay? But it's, it's more becomes difficult, okay? So for example, your metal has been freezed, everything has been freezed, you just, you do not need to change the placement. You have all this, uh, generally when you do the placement, Say generally when you do the placements, all this stuff, right? These are all say your active stuff, active blocks, active gates or cells. What you throw inside the chip is something called spare cells also. Means these are not getting used. These are not getting used. Just like that I've thrown it on this, on this. okay? Why? Say in my next version, I do not want to, I just have to change the functionality little bit, okay? So I do not need to change everything. What I do is, I just say there was a connection like this from say one another block is there. So there was a connection like this. Okay. Instead of this, I need this connection. Okay. So I just cross this connection. Okay. I just connect. So you can manage your ECO by means of your spare cell itself, which has been already existing from your in your floor plan in the I mean the placement blocks. Okay. So once those things are done, uh, this guy actually there will be a huge number of loops say 30 40 60 70 80 actually this sta analysis goes around months two months i have seen okay uh, so, so what they do is typically they save the session they save the session and uh, next day they come and i mean you have to understand that it's all engineers right every day they can work on 8 hours to 10 hours so they save the session next day they come once again and Reinvoke the session and do the analysis once again. Give it to the Astro tool. Astro once again do the ECO change. All those times. Astro also can save the intermediate steps. Okay, so that's how it goes to the closer of the tape out. Okay, at the same time, this is <coughs> this timing analysis you have done. At the same time, with this netlist and with this PAF, you have to do the simulations, which we call uh, is called get sims. Is it? You can see it get sims, right? It's done by once again your own simulator that's cadence LDB sim mission. Right? You are seeing in the lab sim mission. Get sims basically is the simulation with the delays. So with the delays, you can actually see your chip is performing. Okay. So it's a confidence building measure. Once you do that, if it if it if it doesn't happen, you have to debug it and may have to go back to some other level. Okay. If it passes, then only you come back and say, okay, it's tape out. So tape out has to come from STA engine also. One guy will say, okay, it's timing met and all other things met. And get sims people also has to talk about, say, okay, these are all meeting the functionality also with the timing information. Okay. Hmm. Uh, which you mean by inherent delay first of all? What do you mean by inherent delay? Finite amount of time to pass. Yes, 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 yes. There is any other delay? 
Now, is there any other delay inherent out other than inherent? So, this delta delay you have found, right, in your VSDL course. Are you confused with that? That is only the software model when you are doing the simulation. I mean, the way the simulator builds, builds their events and gives you the parallel output, okay. That is nothing to do with the actual circuitry. When we talk about synthesis, right from synthesis, even RTL design also, we do not bother about all, all those, I mean, delays, delta delays and all. All are delays, realistic delays, okay. It is a real delays. Say you have a, just for, you have a gate here, AND gate, okay. So, delay will be from here to here as well as here to here and this is OR, okay. So, this is going to say one buffer. This delay also you have to consider. Earlier, earlier when we were not in sub, uh, deep submicron, that time this gate delay was very, very greater than this OR delay. Say I say TG was very, very greater than TOR, okay. Nowadays, with 65 nanometer, 90 nanometer, etc., this TG is almost equivalent to TW and sometimes TW is greater than TG. This is very much true, okay. So, routing delay is playing the bigger role today. <clears throat> By the way, why this delay comes basically is that because of the capacitance, there will be capacitance, each node and physically you see and that capacitor you have to charge and sometimes that capacitor has to be discharged. So, that charging and discharging basically when you are charging basically what you are doing, you are doing increasing the voltage level, right. So, that takes a finite amount of time which is called by uh, that capacitance uh, time constant, right. It is depend on that time constant. <clears throat> so, what is timing analysis? Basically, this data flows inside a chip, okay, and you have to meet certain kind of constraint inside your chip data flow, okay. That is what is made by our static timing analysis engine. Basically, timing analysis is, uh, is of two types, it is a theoretical stuff, so one is dynamic, other one is static. Dynamic is basically it is simulation based, okay. So, like PSPICE, you might have worked with PSPICE sometimes. So, PSPICE is a dynamic simulation. It actually exercises all the nodes, okay. But it is highly accurate because you are actually exercising what is the value going in other nodes, you are taking those effects, you are actually putting all the equations, delivered equations, first order equations, second order equations, third order equations, etc. And then you are simulating it. So, it is very slow. So, SPICE simulation or dynamic simulation, there is another tool called NanoSim from Synopsys. So, that with those tools, you cannot do a chip tip out. That is impossible because chip has multi million of gates. You cannot do a dynamic simulation for all. But if there is a problem in say inside your chip in a small cluster, you can do a dynamic simulation only for that purpose, or I mean that portion. So, it is highly accurate, but slow runtime and not practical for the whole chip, which is whereas for static, static time analysis, I mean why it is called static time analysis, it is basically formula based. Okay. So, formula based means it has to be a little bit pessimistic, right, compared to dynamic simulation because it has to work. So, if you make it a little more pessimistic, that is no harm, uh, but it probably it is not that much optimized, little bit we are relaxing. But at the same time, what we gain is uh, in the run time is very fast. So, you can actually see with this static time analysis itself, you are taking 2 months, 3 months time, right, to close your STL loop. So, this is most popular nowadays for chip tip out. So, basically it is always worst case analysis, static time is, base, is, 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 is basically always worst case analysis. No, 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 that is not that. The See, for example, say it is kind of you can say the lookup table based also. See, you have a gate and gate, right. And I know that if this, let me draw something here, what I mean by formula based is, so, this is your end gate. Say you are simulating it in speed spice. What you will see is, uh, say I just fix it, okay. This is one, so always static, okay. But this I am toggling. This I am toggling like this, okay. So, here also it will toggle like this, right. In speed spice, what you will see? This guy is one. So, you will see the same thing. You will see something like this. Right? This guy you will see is going, right. And similarly, this also will be moving like something like this, right. 
So the delay of from here to here, how do you measure? Mid 50% of this rise time and 50%. This is your delay for rise. This is your delay for fall. Something like that, right? Whereas, what I mean by formula based is, say this is fixed. This is just for simplicity. And this, I say that this is slew of this much. Slew means the this curve gradient. Okay. If this is this much is theta, what you get is the delay from this to this arc is a tg. Okay. So that will be written somewhere in the table. Okay. That it will directly pick up and use it for your analysis. So it's very fast. How simulation based is work? Simulation based training it does not go for a lookup table. It has completely six order formula, six order, seven order formula. All the effects has taken, all the effects, second order effects, third order effects, transistor characteristics. transistor characteristics. Whereas this library has been already characterized by some tools. So that tool, when it is characterizing, this information has been given in your library itself, standard library itself. From there, you pick up those values and use it. So it's very fast. Okay. And if it is uses PAF, this was standard delay format. If it uses PAF, basically there will be RC, right? R and C. This is RC, RC. So this R and C, it it might be having some just simple formula. So if T uh, G will be some e to the power minus RC or something like that. I, mean, I do not remember. Say R minus RC, RC. RC is your delay. Some formula will be there. So that is very fast compared to its piece wise. And what it does is it uses always worst case. It does not look at what this value, see all these delays, where the complication comes. These delays depends on this transition as well as this transitions also. At the same time, what are the transitions is going on in around here? Some other tracks are there, metal tracks are there. Okay. So if you ignore this stuff as of now, this delay actually depends on this transition as well as this transition also. This can be 1, 0, 0 to 1, 1 to 0. This can be 0 to 1, 1 to 0. So all these combinations, if you take, I mean, it will take pretty huge run, run time. But if you know that this arc and this arc delay, if you know that, say, the maximum of this delay is when this is 1, 0 to 1, it is changing, or 1 to 0, you take that maximum delay always. So you do not need to bother about the minimum delay when you are doing the setup analysis. Okay, so that's how it becomes faster. Okay. okay, so far is it understandable? You are sleeping there, I am seeing good sleep. Okay. So inside a chip there will be typically four types of path. Okay. One is one register to another register, okay. Second one is input port to the register, okay. Third one is from register to output port, okay. And fourth one is pure combinational. Input to output is a pure combinational. This cloud means combinational, AND gate, OR gate, all those stuff, okay. So. When I say a typical path, what we will be doing is, we will be meeting inside, in, in our ST engine, we will be meeting all the timing constraints in, in these paths, right. So four types of path, I have said here path. So what does it mean by a path? Just what we define, say here is the off-chip crystal oscillator, okay. And this is one flip-flop, there is another flip-flop, okay. And this is off-chip crystal oscillator. From here, the clock is coming and going to this point as well as it is going to this point. Okay, and this flip flop is throwing the data going through AND gate, OR gate, marks some ZOR gate, and it's coming to this flip flop. Okay, when I say path, path means it always comes from the clock source. This is very confusing, but see this here path always starts from the clock source and goes through this. Here to here, this arc to this arc, that is called clock to queue delay. Okay, and then it propagates through the, all the gates and wires and comes here. It stops here. Path means here to here. Okay. So this is what I have written here. 
If you see the typical data flow inside a chip is there with a clock, it might be same clock or it might be different different clocks and one register will be there and other register, some other registers will be there. The data will flow jump from here to here, one register to another register, this register to this register and that is how it propagates. It is a synchronous design. If it is asynchronous design, there is no point of putting these registers. Okay. In synchronous design, this data will propagate from one register to other register. Okay. And that is how it is called register transfer level. The data is transferring from one register to other register. So, if you see here, uh, say in the fast clock cycle, okay, this basically the data is launched from this edge okay, and it is captured by this register in the fast clock cycle. It is not that what it launches here, it goes at here also, it is not transparent. Okay. So, you, you have to make sure it does not become a transparent or it does not create any violation. right? So, that is the analysis we will be going to, what are the constraints we need to meet. Okay. So, first clock cycle the data will propagate from here to here, second clock cycle the data will be thrown from here to it will come here, okay. that is how it propagates one by one. <clears throat> so, let me define what is called setup and hold time of a flip flop. When we say flip flop, typically we mean a deep flip flop because I have seen all the uh, flip flops inside our uh, design is deep flip flop that is the most easiest stuff. I, mean, I do not know why people are not using JK maybe because of simplicity or some other reason I am not sure. So, deep flip flop will have typically three pins. Okay. One is D pin, one is Q pin, other one is clock pin. Apart from that there might be reset, preset or enable sometimes. Okay. So, that depends on the design how you design the deep flip flop. Say this is your clock. Okay. This is your clock. So, it is positive edge trigger. What is the difference between flip flop and latch? Flip flop is edge triggered right? and latch is level sensitive, the same design. So, these are the edges where it can sense the data. Okay. See, D is a single pin input, but for your benefit I have just shown like this, so that I can tell that the value of D is here at this point is A, cross means it is changing the value the value here is B and the value here it is C. Now, question is what is the Q value, okay? how it will be? If data, see the data it is coming here, it has to be sensed say by this edge, okay? this edge. So, there is a setup and hold window is defined around this edge. What is setup time? It is the maximum time from here to here. I mean, before that, the data has to be stable, which is coming input to your flop. So this D has to be stable before this point. Okay, that is the setup time, and D has to remain stable up to this. This is the minimum. Uh, it, if it can stable, if, if it if it is stable up to this point, there is no issue. Minimum it has to be stable up to this point, that is the hold time. Okay. Together they are called a setup and hold window. Okay. So, both these constraints has to be met inside your chip. So, if you see here, this this guy is meeting your setup hold constraint. See, B it is stable here, it is it has already changed before this value, right? So, it is B here and it is meeting the hold time also, it is changing after this time. Right. So, what it will do is it will sense this flop will sense the value of B and after clock to Q delay, clock to Q delay the value here will be reflected. So, uh, this point from edge to where it changes the value, okay, this is called clock to Q delay of this flip flop and the value will be B. Okay. Clear? This is very basic. It has to be clear. Okay, that is uh, actually that's a that comes from the physics. Actually, if you see the deep flip flop design, 
uh, there will be some more capacitance okay so those there will be generally a d flip flop is designed by some kind of master slave concept okay you refer to rabe there will be it will be very clear okay and uh, you see the some uh, nodes will have some capacitance those because of see what the, it has to be stable before this means what it has to allow to charge the capacitance you can visualize right right at the same time here means what it it it, it has to allow i mean those charging discharging fund are nothing else one comes from the master side one comes from the slave side you have to go to the uh, that physics uh, that's in uh, rabe it is discussed pretty well okay and if it violates actually if it if it changes around here either it set up violates or fold violation if there okay this q will be uh, there will be some undesired value i mean you, you cannot predict what will be the value okay that it will go to the metastability state okay so those things little bit deeper you can go through by your own <coughs> okay so i try to calculate the set of equation okay in this slide say there is a flip flop 1 there is a flip flop 2 okay and there is a combinational block okay there is a clock the same clock you assume it's going here here going here also okay and there is some buffers okay why these buffers are required because clock is the one signal which is going to so many ports so many pins of flip flops so it has to be restrained it right the current capability of that so for that reason you place some buffer these buffers are dedicatedly designed which is called clock buffers okay so this will definitely take some time at the same time this to this wire will take some time right so say this delay say wire delay is zero for now just for simplicity okay this de this delay is called skew the difference between the i mean when this edge comes and this edge comes will be different because of this delay that difference is called skew so skew can be positive and negative okay if this comes later i will call say i say it's positive skew if this comes later it might be right see you are driving the clock from here to here it might be the clock is coming to this and is also right so then it will be a negative skew okay so assume that the stress is positive for now okay this tg is actually the delay from here to here okay including the wire delays so wire delay is zero so this is the delay of this combination okay so this is my launching clock right and after this q you can see i pointed here this q the clock is coming like this okay this is my capturing clock the same clock but it looks like this if i take a snapshot right the fast data will be launched by this edge right and it has to be captured at this edge that you have to make sure okay second data will be see these are 1l 2l this is 2c 3c 1c 2c 3c c for captured l for launch second data will be launched from here and it has to be captured by this edge launching launching means you are throwing the data you are throwing the data from this flip flop and you are capturing it by here so launching clock what i mean launching clock is this point okay and capturing clock is this point i have drawn the figure this point at this point okay so when you are launching by this edge this has to be captured by this edge launching by this edge this has to be captured by this edge mm. that's a race around the condition you are trying to arise if you capture by this edge itself actually this is due to this q right what we do is typically this q is very less compared to t this q is very less compared to t i am not saying that it cannot capture by this edge also i am not saying that say if you give sufficient delay it can be captured by this edge but that is not our goal actually if you when you will be doing the clock tree synthesis in the back end flow there you try to make sure the q has been balanced properly skew has been balanced in the sense all the skew going to the flops is zero means this is almost zero okay how do you make sure just for understanding say you have placed your flip flop here you have placed your flip flop here right now say this is my clock pin say 
I route the clock like this. One buffer is here. This is my clock. One buffer is here. This is my clock, right? Now you can see that from source. Say I may assume the pin is my source. This delay, these are these are same, okay, matching. And this delay is same, right? So the gap between the when the edge coming is zero almost. This is called skew balancing. Okay. So there will be some H tree, there is start tree, something like that. Those are concepts. When you'll be doing a clock tree synthesis, you have to do perform all this stuff. So why does this clock tree synthesis come in placement or it will come in the back end flow? After placement, uh, you have to do the clock tree synthesis. Mm, yes, yes. So those are also difficult. I mean, when you will do the clock tree synthesis, you will see. <coughs> There's no water. <coughs> in, when you will be doing this, uh, all the static time analysis actually depends on pre clock tree synthesis, post clock tree synthesis. So, strategies will be different, okay. Even your placement and routing also, your strategies will be different. Pre clock tree synthesis, you do not have the information properly of the clock buffers and all the stuff. Whereas, post clock tree synthesis, you have that information also. So, it will be more accurate if you do the post clock tree synthesis. Okay, this slide you have to understand the clearly. So, the what would be my second uh, setup equation? See, I have written here this T is my clock period, T G is the combo delay, includes OI delay between flip flops. OI delay means these segments, okay? And T setup 2 is the setup time of this, this fellow, okay? And T clock to Q1 is the clock to Q delay of this flop. And T skew is this one, okay? So, the data which throws from here, it has to be reached before this, this is the T setup 2, okay, before this. So, the data has been launched here, it will propagate by T clock to Q delay, it comes here, right, and it goes here by TG time, another TG time, clear. So, total delay from here to here is how much? CQ1 plus TG, right. And how do I compensate the T skew? See, if you see that T skew is positive, that means your effective clock period has gone up, right? Right? So it relaxes your setup time. It helps you to meet the setup time. But it does not help you to meet the whole time. You will see later. Okay. Setup and holds are always vice versa. If it helps the setup, it will definitely do some uh, gimmicks for the hold and similarly other thing also. So, why do I take care about the skew? So, I can say that this has to be less than or equal to the T plus T skew minus T setup 2, is it not? Okay, I am just showing. This equation from this figure, from this figure, can you justify this equation? T plus T skew is what? That becomes your effective clock period. Now, T is your actual clock period. T skew is the delay you have, right? And this is the time is your arrival time, right? So, this has to be before this. I have included the setup time here itself, right? I mean, I can put it here also, that does not matter. Is it clear to all? This is your interview question. So, you can see that, okay, is that clear? Once I am just, I am not understanding, it is clear, right? Clear to all. So, T is greater than or equal to all these things? See, I just put this whole bunch is called x, okay. So, this equation has to be valid for the critical path also. Critical path means what? Inside your design, inside your whole chip, there are so many paths. 
this one path this is one path this is a uh, one path right it's going like this all these paths are existing thousands millions of paths are existing out of those path one path which which having the most maximum delay that is called critical path so the same equation has to be valid for that path also that corresponding x i am calling is the x critical so x corresponding to the critical path okay so t of the system has to be greater than x critical so f system which is 1 by t system is 1 by x of this right so you can see that f system max is equal to 1 by x critical right so you can see that my setup time limits the maximum clock frequency of the system clock clear this point has to be very clear that setup time actually governs your clock frequency okay and hold time cannot govern your clock frequency if you see the hold time equation it does not depend on the t i'll come in the next slide okay so this much is clear right so now try to understand what is the whole equation i have written th2 is basically whole time of flip flop 2 okay this is the clock same circuit i have taken flip flop 1 flip flop 2 skew is there same thing all nomenclature are same this is my launching clock launching edges right for setup you have captured here you launched here you captured here launched here you captured here like that right now fast data has been launched here fast data is being captured here right you have ignored this edge right no data this i am assuming this is my fast data launching so there is no capturing in this edge right is ignored fast data is being captured at this point so during capturing somebody see this flip flop actually holds the value when it can change is if it if there is a edge coming clock edge coming right when the next edge coming here so this can go and change the value which is coming here this this has to be very clear so i have to define a setup hold window this is setup window setup time this is my hold time the data has to be stable up to this point at least so whatever the data the second data it is when it is capturing the first data it is already launched the second data that should not come before this point right so what should be your equation now you can always make your own equation this figure you keep in mind this i just elaborated here just for your when you will be offline you can see this so tcq1 plus tg it has launched right so tcq1 plus tg tcq1 plus tg should be greater than or equal to tsq plus th2 correct tcq1 when you are capturing the first data here itself the second data has been already launched right so tcq1 this has been launched how long it takes to reach here it is launching here right tcq1 plus tg right and it has been see if this this q is zero this would have been here right it will help you to i mean to meet the hold equation if you are shifting this basically you are you are affecting the hold equation right i mean it's it's not at all helping it's uh, clubbing your problem right so tsq will be coming in the right side tcq plus tg is equal to tsq greater than tsq plus th2 is that clear now this is another uh, interview question 6 lakh salary now negative tcq 
I am assuming here T is Q positive. If it is negative, you assume that T is Q value is negative. If it is negative, T is Q it is helping the hold. T is Q negative means what? This, this guy has come here before this fellow, right? This age is before this age itself. So there is a less chance, less probability of hold violation, correct? If it moves towards right, there is more chance of hold violation. So here I have seen that TSQ helps to meet the setup time, but positive TSQ I have written. This increases the chance of hold violation. Okay. So here is another point I have just written that in setup equation clock period is there, but in hold equation T is not involved. Okay. So maximum clock frequency is only limited by setup time and not by the hold time. Just for your knowledge. Okay. Why I have written this is basically, see generally you close your timing, say if if the, if the there is a T in your hold equation, stay, okay. so definitely the way it will, it will uh, behave for setup, it will definitely behave in the ultra in for the hold, right. Now generally how people do the, uh, in the market say is you close the timing for say 200 megahertz, right, the same chip can work actually any frequency less than 200 megahertz, say 199, 190, 100 megahertz, anything, right. If there is a T in the hold equation, this should not be possible. There would be an window of the T clock, got it. See, what I am saying is, I am saying that clock frequency, this is my number line, okay, just number line clock frequency can go to up to this point and this is my zero frequency okay this side possible nahi hai. so i can operate the chip any frequency in between here any frequency at least from setup and hold point of view not from other point of view if there is a t in the hold okay then it could have the operating region could have been bounded by some minimum and maximum that is the beauty if there is no T in the T hold. So that is why you will see that people closes for one frequency, it works in another frequency for say I the same chip I will be de delivering to two companies. One guy has a system of 200 megahertz, other guy has a system of 100 megahertz. So why I will make the two chips? I will make one chip. I will make one chip and I will ask them to scale down the frequency. That is it. Okay. Now just one slide, this is the STA engine. Now I am trying to analyze given my knowledge in setup equation and hold equation. There are other issues also, okay, I am not talking about that right now. So many issues actually. So you, there is a setup a STA engine, STA engine, engine means the tool, prime time say for synopsis. So what are the inputs and outputs of this ST engine that has to be very clear. You have taken the synthesized netlist, okay. This is you are expecting the timing has been clean. Then why are you doing the STA here? You have done, I told you right, that timing is clean in the synthesized netlist itself. Then why are you doing this here? First of all, this is much more accurate right it can act actually in any level in the in the netlist level itself or in the placement level itself right and it has to work all through the design flow okay this is much more accurate you cannot believe this guy because this engine is less powerful than this engine okay so there will be libraries standard cell libraries or macro libraries okay there is design constraints what are design constraints i'll talk about them today just for one example, just to say what is design constraint to appreciate. Say this is your chip. You have a flip flop here, okay? And say this is my clock. 
after some delay it is going right and this actually this clock you have to constrain properly what is your its clock period how it is waveform see this clock period is a 4 nanosecond that's right the waveform could be 0 to 4 that is 50 percent duty cycle right duty cycle is what on time by total time or it could have been like this also this is total 4 that is 1 is to 3 it could have been right there is no issue so all these constants you have to provide all these input pins delay output pins delay right is there any false path is there any multi cycle path all you have to provide that is called design constraint ok. So, this design constraints typically mostly you have applied in the synthesis itself. So, why you will write it once again? So, there will be a command write SDC I have shown you yesterday that command actually generate a file called synopsis design constraint that SDC file you can directly use here and you can add on this file itself if you want to use some more definitely you will be definitely you need some more constraint when you do the PT ok definitely you need. So, you have to add on on this ok. So, then there will be parasitics also say you have done the placement already. So, parasitics means those RC values that information you have to give this is called SPIF synopsis parasitics extraction format file ok say a dot SPIF b dot SPIF something like that ok and there could be SDF also you can close the time by SDF also this is you know uh, standard delay format. I think this is standard parasitic extraction format I am not sure ok. This standard delay format this is faster than SPIF but SPIF is much more accurate than SDF either you can use this or this anything ok. And during after doing all the analysis the output is basically one one text file which is called timing report ok. Then you have to use your intelligence and say all are ok or not ok and debug kind of thing. It cannot do anything on your design that is the main point it cannot do anything on your design but it can suggest what has to be done. And that size and tool automatically does not provide that the timing cons uh, that fellow I mean the engineer that engineer has to talk. So, when you will be doing the analysis you might have heard the terms there are multiple PVT corners you have to analyze it. What PVT stands for? One is process, other one is for voltage, other one is for temperature. When you are designing the chip that means the process is same right say 180 nanometer technology the process remains same, but still the process will have its own uncertainty. The TSMC people or the National Semiconductor the design those standards and liability they will have certain kind of randomness inside your in their design itself. So, that process variation has been modeled as some by, by some randomness ok. Some random variable say margin some provide you have to provide some margin and all. So, if you just ignore this right now for our case I mean you have to include this, but apart from this this voltage and temperature governs to design uh, to to say uh, to I mean classify some corners ok. We call max corner, mean corner, typical corner or fast corner, slow corner, typical corner. Why? Because as voltage increases delay decreases that means it becomes faster and if temperature increases delay increases ok that means it becomes slower, but your chip but your chip has to work in all the corners. So, say process is 180 nanometer technology CMOS 9 say slow corner typical corner fast corner ok slow cor see this actually the operating voltage is 1.8 volt 27 degree centigrade this is my room 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 temperature. So, this is my typical corner most of the time chip will be working in this, but this may not be the case the chip has to operate in a large span of temperature and large span of voltage why temperature that is very 
you may be say for defense application you may go to some other point okay or the chip becomes very hot because a lot lot of power consumption it becomes very hot so it has to operate in that temperature or you may go to some uh, say kashmir right there also it has to operate so might be zero degree centigrade okay so all this first corner you have to analyze the timing and close the timing in all the corners so but why the voltage variation is coming inside your chip basically okay why this voltage variations may come so this is your chip okay and this is the power supply you have provided right and say you are drawing the power this is one standard cell right so this standard cell is taking the power from this fellow right so it has to be laid out from here to here so this is what this is a metal line so it has own its rc values okay so so c you remove so the current will flow through this right so i into r is what ir so the voltage will definitely drop here what is that this vdd minus i into r right so this is called ir drop you have to do ir drop analysis also in the back end that is more difficult stuff okay so basically now i am saying that all the ir drop all these paths has to be within 0.2 volt so 1.8 volt is my typical it can go up or go down by 0.2 volt 1.6 volt 2 volt why it can go up i am not sure maybe because of the fluctuation of the vdd itself okay or uh, uh maybe some other reason uh, maybe some reflection and all i am not sure I, I i didn't think about it actually because of this i drop this reduce that i'm sure okay so the corners what would be your slow corner common sense voltage you reduce maximum you can reduce it by 2.2 volt that's the design you have to freeze that back end fellow will make sure that it cannot go beyond 1.6 any point in the chip cannot be operating less than 1.6 so 1.6 volt and sometimes the library itself it characterize you know this library itself is characterized by that the library people say that okay um, my uh, library means what it's a design right it's a design of some standard cells they will say that i have characterized it for 1.8 volt 2 2 volt right side and 1.6 volt left side okay so you have to freeze by this by this voltage itself so 1.6 volt 125 degree centigrade for defense generally and 70 degree for general purpose okay so with this maximum so maximum temperature minimum voltage give you the slowest corner okay whereas the fastest corner is the maximum voltage minimum temperature okay that is your fastest corner now from your common sense you can say that the slowest corner is more prone to have setup violation correct is that clear no are you feeling it or just like that you are saying <laughs> because it has to this because the data path delay right right because of that then this fastest corner is more prone to have fault violations because data path becomes faster so it goes and immediately changes it so it's more prone to fault violation so you have to close the timing in all the corners i have another 17 or 18 slides so another 5 minutes i give the break okay so what are the design constraints this design constraints i said earlier is is equally valid for the synthesis also so generally for your own uh, benefit actually i have broken up in two type of constraint one is clock constraints other one is non clock constraints okay clock constraints i will be talking sometimes and non clock constraints i have broken up is as input output constraints and there will be some kind of exceptions what are those exceptions typically there is a false path you have to exceptions are like false path multi cycle path etc okay 
okay here i have written that constants are generally given by sdc file generated by dc dc means design compiler it can be generated by pt also okay you can add extra constant also in pt this for your note okay. so what is false path i first discuss about false path this is another interview question false path means false means what it's not a valid path valid path for what validity in terms of what validity in terms of timing optimization you do not need to worry about that path timing is it meeting or not okay <clears throat> so is that clear false path means the definition of false path it's a path which is you need no, for which you need not to worry about for its timing of constant meeting and all okay you do not need to worry about the timing of that path so typically all asynchronous paths all asynchronous paths static paths static path sometimes you need to decide whether it's a false path or not okay but all asynchronous paths are definitely false path but static paths depend on your experience you can understand i'll give you one example and non functional paths these are typically three types of false path there may be others i have just given three examples okay I think that next I'll start. Otherwise, next session will be finished very fast. So, I'll start from false path in the next uh, section. Okay. Because so far it is understandable, right? Yes. Clear. Thanks. Break. Huh? I'll I'll say I'll say what. Otherwise, the tool will be working unnecessarily to optimize that, right? And it may make a lot of violation. It's not required at all.